My name is Dr Louise Lim. I'm a medical oncologist based here at St Bartholomew's Hospital and I work predominantly in the immune therapy group um, here at Barts. Today I'm going to be talking about the different treatment options available in metastatic renal cancer. Um, I'm going to be talking about VEGF inhibitors and also going to be touching on immune therapy and its role in renal cancer. My main focus on the talk today is going to be on metastatic renal cancer, which is essentially cancer that has spread from the kidneys to other parts of the body, as opposed to cancer that's predominantly confined to the kidney and treated with nephrectomies. The main histological cell type in renal cell carcinoma is clear cell cancer, and this results from upregulation in a protein called VHL, which in turn upregulates VEGF. And as you can see, VEGF levels are clearly very high in renal cancers as opposed to other cancer types. So this is a Kaplan-Meier curve, so a survival curve, which essentially shows how far we've come in terms of VEGF-targeted therapy. And as you can see in terms of overall survival, there's been an increase from previously being around 18 months to now 30 months, which is a significant improvement. However, it does look like we've come as far as we can go with VEGF targeted therapy, as certainly the most recent clinical trials have all been negative ones. This does mean that we've had to look at other potential treatment options available to treat metastatic kidney cancer, and one of these areas is immune therapy. We have known about the immune system playing a very important role in the development of cancer for a long time, but it's probably only been in the last couple of years that we've really known how the T cells play an important component of our immune system and they essentially attack the cancer cells. However, there are certain cancer cell types that express proteins on their surfaces, one of which is called PDL1, and essentially it's the joining of PDL1 to PD1 on the cytotoxic T cells, which essentially camouflages the cancer cells now to the immune system. So essentially meaning that the immune system can no longer recognize the cancer cells as the foreign body that it is and attack it. We could potentially reverse this process from happening by now giving an antibody that binds to PDL1, releasing PD1 from the cytotoxic T cells, which can now recognize uh, cancer cells and attack it. So very much like turning on the runway lights of an otherwise darkened runway. We also know from studies that we've done with um, these antibodies to PD-L1 that cancers that express high levels of PD-L1 essentially tend to have the greatest responses to treatment. This has been taken to a randomized phase 3 study with the use of PD-L1 antibody in the second line setting. So patients are randomized to receive either nivolumab or Avrilimus. And with the overall results looking at survival, the results of which will be available in 2015. This study is now closed. We also know that PD-L1 therapy tends to be associated with durable responses, especially in combination with other immune therapies, such as CTLA-4 blockers. And this graph essentially shows that you could get a durable response um, in changes in size with tumour with time with the combination therapy. We're taking this to a randomised phase 3 study. So we're going to be combining anti pd one therapy with CTLA-4 blockers in the first line setting. Um, this is going to be an extremely exciting study as it's going to go head to head with sunitinib, again in the metastatic uh, clear cell renal group. Um, with the primary outcome being overall survival. Going back to our initial Kaplan-Meier curve that we saw to begin with, we know that VEGF targeted therapy is good. We're now asking the question whether it could be better with combination um, PD-L1 treatment. This is a study that's currently recruiting and open here at BART. It's one of Professor Polzer's studies, and it's a randomized phase two study in which patients are randomized to receive either VEGF therapy, a PDL1 antibody, or VEGF therapy plus PDL1 therapy. Again, um, the outcome measure is going to be progression free survival. So, this is all really exciting stuff. 
um, and a lot of research and development is going into this area of immune therapy. So a run through of where we are currently. We know there are two ways of targeting VEGF. We've got the VEGF TKIs, um, which directly inhibit the action of VEGF on cell surfaces, examples of which include sunitinib and pazopinib. And we've also got the mTOR inhibitors, which indirectly affect the VEGF um, pathway, examples of which include tanzarolimus and avrolimus. In the UK, NICE has approved both sunitinib and pazopinib in the first line setting. And we're also very fortunate to have the Cancer Drugs Fund because this does mean that we have access to a multitude of drugs which in many places of the world we don't actually have access to. So in terms of first line setting we've got choices in terms of sunitinib and pazopinib and in the second line setting we've got excitinib and avrolimus. So which is better, pazopinib or sunitinib? Mm -hmm.